All right, you guys. So today's gonna be a very unique video. Um, I wanna do a test with Simon here of what it's like to actually fly in clouds. Not just instrument flying, I've done videos before of uh, flying with just the hood on. And, uh, and that doesn't really simulate flying in clouds because when you have your hood on, there's always still a little bit of visibility that you can see outside just uh, in, per in peripheral vision. And it's amazing that I can pick up, even if you have a tiny bit of visual on the ground somewhere, that I can actually pick up um, horizon and pitch and it's able to help you with, uh, with your flying. So what we're doing today, is let me take you inside here we're setting the helicopter up uh, we are completely whiting out the floor under here and we've put this safety bar right here across like this and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this blanket and this blanket is going to be over top of Simon's head and it's going to be completely covering the windshield in front of him he's going to have no visibility on the windshield beside him and nothing in front of him there and he's going to only be using the instruments of the helicopter so we're going to have um, his aspen display here we're also going to have a synthetic vision on the ipad here as well and um, so he's going to be able to use the instruments of the aircraft only and he's going to be able to uh, fly the helicopter hopefully we'll see how it goes with just the use of those instruments so we're going to get it set up we've got it everything double checked to make sure the 100 percent safe i'm going to have full visuals of everything so there's no safety concerns with this I'm going to be sitting on this side of the helicopter. I'll be able to see over the blanket and see if there's any traffic coming in any direction. So we've got full safety here, um, but we wanted to do a test of what it's actually like if you're flying in clouds. And we wanted to take you guys along for that as well to show you what it's like to fly in clouds with a helicopter. It's a very, very difficult thing. Uh, very hard to hold your, uh, your horizon to know whether or not you're banking and to be able to trust yourself and, and, and the eyes and see that what you're seeing out the window or sorry, what you're seeing on your instruments is actually what's happening outside the helicopter. Very, very tough to trust that. We're gonna see how Simon does today. All right, you guys, so we're out flying now, and believe it or not, Simon is somewhere underneath this blanket here. How's it feeling under there, Simon? It's feeling really good. It's a bit uh, sketchy. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Simon is set up. I've, I told him to set up at um, 1,500 feet, 70 knots and hold a heading of 350 degrees. How's that going for us right now, Simon? We are at 345, we are at 68 knots and at 1500 feet. Okay, excellent, sounds good. And uh, you have the synthetic vision going in there, right? Yep. Can you see water in front of us? There's a waterway there. Uh, yeah, like I can a, see the Fraser like River. A big river, it's actually not a Fraser River. Oh, uh, no? It's, no, it's uh, Howard, um, Hayward Lake, and then ah. that takes us up to Stave Lake. So I want you to follow that waterway. Um, so as you can see, it's a little more off to your right, isn't it? Yep, I can see that. Okay, so I want you to follow that waterway and we're gonna follow that all the way up to Stave Lake, all right? Okay. Now I just wanna put a little disclaimer in here. Please do not use any of these references, um, like the synthetic vision on the iPad or um, any of your instruments if you're not IFR certified. Please do not fly at night without lit, um, uh, without lighting or in clouds unless you're IFR certified and you're legally allowed to do it. So we're doing this test under a controlled situation uh, with a visual pilot that's able to see everything. So please don't do this. We're doing this just for the sake of testing what it's actually like to be fully in cloud. So it's not feeling too bad under there now, eh? It seems pretty stable. Yeah, it's not too bad if you're getting used to cross-checking all the instruments. It's yep. quite stable. Yeah. But if I would be alone right now and like really in the clouds, I would be freaking out. <laughs> Why? Like, what? What's the major factor? It's really scary because you can't see anything. Only your like kind of lagging instruments. Okay. So, so every input you're doing is lagging a little bit behind. Okay. So it doesn't give you the feeling of having full life control. Right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like if your instruments died, you you would not have the ability to, to keep the helicopter upright? I will probably have 30 seconds and then I will be out of control and dead within a few uh, interesting. minutes. Interesting. Well, we're going to actually try that in a minute here. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going for a little bit, but I'm gonna get you in about 30 seconds or so. I'm gonna get you to shut the iPad off yeah. and power the Aspen off. Okay. And I want to see what happens. You're gonna still have your other two instruments. So you're oh. gonna have you're gonna have your altitude on the the old um, conventional gauge, yeah. as well as your um, airspeed. <coughs> sorry, your airspeed indicator. Yeah. But you're gonna have no artificial horizon. Oh wow. Okay. So. We're going to go a little bit further. As you can see on your synthetic vision, we have mountains nearby us, right? Yeah, to the right. Yep. And so once we, yeah, that's right. So once we open up a little bit more here, 
Um, we're going to get past this little ridge that you're going to see in front of you. Yep. And then you're going to go ahead and power that off, okay? Okay. So just click the button on the iPad um, any time that you're ready now. Okay. You can click the button off. So the iPad is off. Okay. And then hold the power button on the Aspen and tell me when that's off. The Aspen is off too now. Okay, so is it too dark to be able to see the other two instruments now? Oh no, it's You perfect, can still see them? But I have no idea about my bank. Exactly, okay. No idea. So, um, we don't have a heading indicator, but you do have a compass. That's yeah. interesting, you can't see the compass. So yeah, now I can. That's very interesting. So everybody here on this camera can see what's going on, but you have no clue. Yep. I want you to use just what you have as far as ear reference to get the helicopter nice and level, okay? I'm so try and, like crazy. So, okay, try and get altitude and try and get airspeed. No chance. Okay. No chance. I have control? Yep. Alright. Oh. So we're going to pull the helicopter back out. Okay. Oh my word. Try not to swear because I have to bleep all these swear oh, words out. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my word. So let's do that again. Yeah, That's crazy. So we have um, attitude is good, and I want you to hold airspeed and altitude. Okay, so you have control. Yep. And it's all yours. I'm yep. taking control My off. Try and hold it nice and steady. Don't bank. <laughs> That's something you can say back there. Yeah. Oh my word. I know I have the tendency to go to the, to the right. Are we banking left or right right now? We bank to the right. Okay, I have control. Oh my word. Are you filming that? I am filming oh, this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's crazy. And we let's had a the time. We had a steep bank to the left. Yeah, I have a tendency to go to the left. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to shut the camera off. We're going to reset. Yeah. Okay, you guys. So I've gotten Simon back to a safe altitude. What are we at for altitude, Simon? Uh, 1,300. Okay, I want you to hold 1,300 feet. And what are we at for airspeed? 70 knots. 70 knots. I want you to hold 1300 feet in 70 knots. You have control. Yep. My I'm going to take my hands off the controls in yep. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, my hands are off the controls, as you can see here. No hands on the controls. And I'm counting how many seconds. It's been about 6 seconds. I'm counting how many seconds it's going to take for Simon to completely lose control here. So this time is actually better than the last two times. You've been doing way better here. Yeah, impressive. So there's a, an ability to learn this by the looks of it. Yeah, because I know I have a tendency to go to the left. Oh. I try to overcompensate now to the right. Interesting, okay. Am All I right. still in a good mood? I'm not gonna say anything. You do whatever the body tells you whatever you think is good. So Simon has no bank reference whatsoever or attitude. The only way he can tell attitude is if the speed speeds up or slows down. So he's able to tell um, uh, pitch up or pitch down, but he's not able to tell left or right bank. So I think it's been about 45 seconds now. And you're doing much better than last time, I must say. So if you had an idea of what we're doing right now, would you say we're flying level or are we turning right or left? I think we're turning right and now it's gonna go out of control, I think. Now we're climbing a bit and we're turning slightly right. No, no. Now it's over. Okay. The game is over. Okay, I'm gonna talk you through it. Bank to the right. And forward. Woo! Okay, I had to grab a control there because yeah. you banked up dramatically. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that was. Um, I think that I, if I'm I looking at my time correctly, it was about 50 seconds, 40, 45 seconds maybe, 50 seconds, and you were completely out of control. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. So within 45 seconds, without these instruments, Simon was basically dead. He was as good as dead. If I would have given him another. 15 seconds without taking control, the helicopter would have either A, flipped upside down, or B, it would have crashed into the ground. 15 seconds would have been max. 
Um, so incredible, incredible, when you don't have the references, how quickly the helicopter can get out of control. There's a, um, a statistic done, 72 seconds is the number. It takes 72 seconds for a pilot to lose all orientation and crash into the ground. Now, that's plus or minus a bit, of course, but that's kind of the averages. Very scary stuff. Um, and I want everybody to take this super seriously. If, if you don't have vision, um, it, it's incredible how quick you're going to lose control. And he even had partial instruments. He had airspeed and altitude, and so he had a little bit of reference to be able to help him. If he, did, if he lost all reference whatsoever, um, there would be no hope whatsoever. But very interesting, when he gets that reference back, look at this, guys. He turned around the helicopter 180 degrees. He's flying totally steady, totally good. And, uh, and he's going to continue this flight. So um, IFR flying in Canada is only certified with two pilots. You can, in the U.S., you can actually get certified for IFR single pilot, one pilot. But um, in Canada, you need two pilots. And this is one of the reasons why, because the workload is pretty heavy when you're trying to fly the aircraft and actually keep it uh, straight and level, and then also have to do the actual IFR work, which is not only keeping the helicopter safe, but to navigate somewhere because you have to obviously go somewhere when you're in the clouds you don't know where you are so that's what simon's doing right now but he's doing both on his own and i'm just here as a safety pilot to back up and make sure um, everything is still flying safe all right so i thought of something really interesting here guys um, i have a question and uh, and i don't know the answer but i am wondering if somebody was naturally blind would they be able to control the helicopter more naturally than if somebody was regularly could ha had full sight but was blindfolded to be able to fly the helicopter. So what you guys just saw a minute ago with Simon losing the controls very quickly, I wonder if somebody was naturally blind, if they would have a better intuition, if their ears were able to balance better because they were used to using those senses more, um, if, if they were able to hold the helicopter more steady. Um, I know there's a YouTuber uh, named Molly Burke, and she just recently did a video with Casey Neistat, and it was really intriguing to me to watch that video and what they did there. And um, so I've messaged her. I don't know if she'll ever get my message, but I've messaged her to see if she would be willing to come up here and do a flight with me to be able to see what the difference would be. I'm going to do a comparison. I could I could fly with her, and then I could fly with her mom, and uh, and see what the comparison would be for two people who have never flown the helicopter before of what it would actually be like if they were able to hold the helicopter, if she was able to hold the helicopter um, steady longer. That would be very interesting uh, for me to ch check out. All right, Simon, give me your overall opinion. We're on the ground back safe and sound. It was a really cool experience. <laughs> That's what I can guarantee. If you have the possibility, do that once, yeah. and you see how quick you have no clue where you are, especially if you have no instruments. It's crazy. But you'd never want to do it in real cloud unless you had all the right instruments, oh, eh? Oh, yeah. And make sure that it was proper certified IFR equipment that couldn't fail, like the iPad could just shut down on us. Uh, you'd want to have redundancy of everything. Um, so that's why it's so important for IFR flying that there's redundancy of everything. There's redundancies of alternators and instruments and everything so that you have that double backup safety. Yeah. Um, because as you guys saw, within just a few seconds, the helicopter can get completely out of control. This is not something to play around with. Um, when we teach people about flying around clouds, um, we, we always have a healthy respect for how far away we are from clouds and, and really, really teaching the importance of um, staying away from the clouds, keeping good vertical uh, visual reference to the, the hillsides and everything because it's so, so, so important that you'd never, ever fly into cloud um, by accident. That's, it's just, it's something that is, sounds like a no-brainer, um, but people will just push the limits, push the limits and always get into too low of situations and then they accidentally fly into cloud and they end up crashing very quickly as you guys saw. Why? Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing how quickly the helicopter gets out of control. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, share it with somebody that you think would uh, find this interesting and uh, give it a thumbs up and we'll talk to you guys soon.